Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video. And in this video, we will be starting chapter seven on discrete functions, sequences, and series. Uh, in this particular lesson, we will be doing section 7.1, um, covering arithmetic sequences. Here's the chapter outline for chapter seven. And you can find extra practice questions after we go over arithmetic uh, sequences on pages 424 to 425. Okay, so let's get started. Here's the success criteria for this lesson. Firstly, we want to learn and understand the nomenclature behind sequences. So we just want to look at a few definitions um, just so we can get a, um, you know, the general idea of what we're talking about during the lessons. Um, then we want to define the domain and range of an arithmetic sequence, which is the same for most of them, at least for the domain. The range changes, but the domain usually stays the same. Um, and then lastly, we want to learn the three ways to define arithmetic sequences. Let's go over some definitions that we need to know before going into any examples with sequences. So first, what is a sequence? Well, a sequence is simply an ordered pair, uh, sorry, an ordered list of numbers. This could be increasing, decreasing, or both. So for example, 2, 15, 30, 33, and so on is a sequence. We, are, um, we have an ordered pair of numbers. Um, I'm only showing four here because this could go on forever, but that is a quick example of a sequence. They're in no particular order, um, but they're just a sequence of numbers. Then we have a term. <coughs> a term is a number in a sequence, such as 15 in the sequence we just looked at. And to identify the position of a term, we're here, I forgot to uh, arrow that. Um, to ad identify a position in a term, we use um, subscripts. We use subscripts, which we will see in the next slide, um, what they look like, but um, we use subscripts to identify their position. And then we have arithmetic sequence, which is again, just a sequence, but oh, again, I forgot the arrow. But um, between any pair of consecutive terms, there is a common difference. So up here, we didn't have really a pattern to the sequence. But if we look at the example down here of 3, 12, 21, and 30, which is an arithmetic sequence, because each um, two consecutive terms have a common difference of 9. So to get to three, from 3 to 12, you add 9. To get from 12 to 21, you add 9. To get from 21 to 30, you add 9. So they each have a difference of 9 between them. Moving on to the next set of definitions, we have recursive sequence, where each successive term is determined from the pre previous term. So usually, we are given one or more terms to be able to determine the rest of the sequence. But the recursive sequence just means that uh, we can use the terms in the sequence to keep finding terms, right? So we can use uh, term number one to find term number two to find term number three. Next, we have general term, which um, is a formula, which is labeled as TN. And N is that subscript I was talking about earlier. So in this case, we're just indicating a term in position N, right? So here would be the position where the term is in, uh, in the sequence. So a formula, uh, the general term is a formula that expresses each term of the sequence as a function of its position. Um, meaning we can use the term position, n, right? n is the position, in an equation that helps us figure out what number is actually in that position. So for example, we have the general term for a random sequence which is Tn equals 2n. And then to calculate, for example, for the 12th term, T12, right, the subscript um, after T means that we're looking for the term T in position 12. We substitute n equals 12 into our general term. If we substitute 12, we get 2 times 12, uh, T12 equals 2 times 12, which equals 24. So at position 12, we have a number 24. And our general term to find any term in the sequence at a position we want to look at 
we use Tn equals two, uh, 2 times n. Lastly, we have the recursive formula, which is a formula that relates the general term of a sequence to the previous terms. The formula uses the previous term to calculate for the following term after that. So for example, we have Tn equals Tn minus 1 plus 4, which is just a recursive formula for a random sequence. But you can see that, for example, if you wanted to find T4, we would use T4 minus 1 plus 4, which equals T3 plus 4. So to find the term at position 4, we use the term by, at position 3, we add 4, and then we get the term at position 4. Let's quickly look at the domain and range of, a, of an uh, arithmetic sequence. As every sequence is a discrete function, meaning we can graph the sequence on an x and y plot, the location of the terms, which are indicated by the subscripts, become the domain of the sequence, meaning that the sequence has a set of natural numbers as a domain, and natural numbers are basically just whole numbers. So here are the natural numbers. It goes one, two, three, and so on, all the um, whole numbers, and that becomes the domain of the sequence depending on how long the sequence is. So if the sequence has 20 numbers, right, the domain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 20. The range of the sequence is made up by the actual numbers in the sequence. So for example, if our sequence is 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on, our range is going to be 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. And we can actually graph these numbers because we have, um, as our x values, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, up to whatever um, the length of the sequence is. And as a range, we have the numbers of the sequence. So it becomes kind of like a function. OK, an arithmetic sequence is a recursive sequence because, again, we can use previous terms to get the following terms by adding the same value, also known as the common difference. So if you look at the two examples down here, we have sequence, we have sequence 2, 6, 10, 14, and it keeps going. So if we take a look at the difference between each term, right, we have, uh, we'll take term 2, which is 6, and term 1, which is 2, and we'll do 6 minus 2, we'll get 4. If we take term 3, subtract term 2, 10 minus 6, right, this is term 3, this is term 2, 10 minus 6, we get 4. And then term 4 minus term 3, 14 minus 10, and we get 4 as well. So our common difference is going to be positive 4 because we're adding 4 to get the next term. So to go from 2 to 6, we add 4. From 6 to 10, we add 4. And from 10 to 14, we add 4. And you can see how this is a recursive sequence as well um, as a arithmetic sequence because we're using 2. We add 4 to 2 to get 6. We add 4 to 6 to get 10. So we, we're using each term to get the next term. And then for sequence number 2, we have 9, 6, and 0. Oh, sorry, 9, 6, 3, 0, and so on. Um, and again, if we do the same thing we did on the left side, we subtract second term min, uh, minus the first term, we get negative 3. Third term minus the second, 3 minus 6, we get negative 3. Um, and fourth term minus third term, 0 minus 3, we get negative 3. So our common difference this time is going to be a negative number. It's going to be negative 3 because we're adding negative 3, right? We can kind of just say we're adding negative 3, which also means we're subtracting 3, right? So we're adding negative 3 or we're just simply subtracting 3. And again, it shows you how this is a recursive sequence as well <laughs> because to get 6, we just subtract 3 from 9. To get 3, we just subtract 3 from 6, and so on. Lastly, let's look at the three ways we can define arithmetic sequences. The first way is through the general term. Using the first term A, <coughs> the common difference D, and a general term number N, we can create a formula that which allows us to evaluate for any number in the sequence at a certain position, just as long as we know A and D. So the formula 
is t of n, the term at position n, equals a, the first number, the first uh, term, plus n minus 1, all in brackets, times the difference. Which makes sense because, for example, if we're trying to find term number 4, and let's say our um, first term is 1, right? If we're trying to find a term 4, n is going to equal 4, so n here is going to equal 4. 4 minus 1, and let's say the common difference is 2, right? This becomes 4 equals 1 plus um, 3 times 2. And this makes sense because we're starting at 1 and our common difference is 2, meaning we're adding 2 every time we go from term to term, right? So if we start at 1, which is at position t1, to get to position t2, we add 2. To, to get to position t3, we add another 2. To get to position t4, which is what we're looking for, we add another 2. So we're adding 2 3 times 1, 2, and 3. And so here, we're just multiplying 3 times 2, which is the same would be the same thing as adding plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, right? So that's how you can see how the formula actually works. It just multiplies the common difference by the amount of times you have to add the common difference to the first term. So in this case, you would get 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, right? And if we were to write out our sequence, our sequence would be 1. If, if the common difference is 2, we just add 2. So next term is 3, next term is 5, and next term is indeed 7 at t4. Okay? Next way to represent arithmetic sequences is using the recursive formula. This again we saw in the previous slides, but it just means that we use the previous term to get the next term. So the formula is, again as we saw before, tn, so a term at position n, equals the term at position n minus 1, so the position before tn, um, plus d, which is the common difference. And t1, the term of position 1, is going to be our first term, and n cannot be uh, less than 1, right? It has to be greater than 1, because um, if we were to plug in a, a 1 into this n, we'd get 1 minus 1, and we get t of 0, which doesn't exist because we're, start, we're starting at t1 in the sequence, okay? And again, if we're looking for term 4, we would get t3 minus 1, sorry, 4 minus 1, plus a common difference, let's say it's 2, and it would get us t3 plus 2. And if we actually use the sequence that we made up here, if we plug in uh, t3, which is 5, right? The term of position 3 is 5, and we add 2, we'd get 7, which is t4, right? So you can see how that works as well. <laughs> and lastly, we have the discrete linear function. This turns our sequence into a function that we can actually graph in an x and y plot. And it goes as follows. It says f of n equals d times n plus b. And b is going to be at t of 0. I know I said t of 0 doesn't exist, but t of 0 is actually not in the sequence. It's actually the first term minus the common difference. So it's kind of like our, our y-axis our y-intercept, sorry, in our plot, right? It's because if we have our plot, since our terms uh, begin at t1, right? At t1, we'd have our first term, but we want to have another term in the y-axis, right? At t0, so our t0 would be the first term minus the common difference, right? One before our first term, and then we can kind of just create our line. And this is actually, um, if you notice, kind of an mx plus b uh, format. So b is b, and our mx plus b. Then our m would be our common difference, which would be the slope of the graph, right? And it makes sense because the common difference is the amount we're increasing by. So it makes sense that it would be our, our slope. And n is our variable that we change, of course that we plug into function f of n. 
Okay, and that is it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.